Hey guys, uh, if you're tuning back in or joining for the first time, I really appreciate it. I'm standing actually in my horse trailer right now. If you watched my intro video, you know that kind of part of what made me want to do this is I've always wanted to find a way to use horses to try to reach people who are struggling with stress, anxiety, depression, things like that, and kind of give them an outlet. Um, so since I can't be doing that yet, um, trying to be creative and still somehow do this through social media. So I'm in my, um, I'm outside, I'm in my trailer today and I wanted to use this and use my horses as um, kind of a catalyst to talk about uh, panic attacks and what happens when we panic. So uh, let me walk you around to the back of the trailer and show you the inside of it. So I have a slant load trailer. Um, if you have horses, you know what that is. If you don't, maybe not. But regardless, uh, this is what the inside of the trailer looks like. I flipped the camera around so you guys could see it. So uh, essentially you just walk in uh, through this doorway. Uh, you have a couple panels in here. This is a three horse trailer, so it can hold up to three horses, but I keep the front the front stall essentially just to store hay. Uh, so this is this space right here is the second stall. Um, and once the horse goes in there, you just slide you just slide this panel in behind it. You lock it in place, and then you have um, a middle stall, and then you also have this third stall back here. Um, and they have their hay bags and their windows. That's where their head goes up there, obviously. And then when you're ready to take them out, you just unlatch this little guy, slide that back in place, and then they can essentially back out of the trailer like that. I had hauled my horse over to a practice arena a couple weeks before we, um, before we got into the, the issues of the pandemic. And I wanted to use that example um, to, as an opportunity to talk about panic attacks. Um, because, you know, I had taken this horse to this practice arena. She had ridden in the trailer over there. I had, you know, gotten her out rode her, then put her back in the trailer. We hauled back to the farm. So she had already been in the trailer for probably like two hours when we got back to the farm that day uh, to unload. And she had been nice and calm and quiet the whole ride over, the whole way back. Um, you know, they have their little hay bags here. This is alfalfa hay, which is like the filet mignon of hay for horses. Um, so they usually just munch on that and they're usually pretty, um, pretty content back here. Uh, they got their windows so they can see out and everything like that. So she had done really well on the ride over and really well on the ride back. And I went to unload her at the barn and all of a sudden, for whatever reason, she kind of went into this full blown panic attack. Um, and she was in this, she was in her little stall area, um, pawing, kicking, banging herself up against the panels. Um, just having a full-on conniption. Um, and I wanted to keep her as safe as possible, uh, so I didn't want to open the gate and let her out. As you can imagine, if, you're ha if you have the horses like completely going insane in here and you unlatch that panel, they could easily like run and hurt themselves um, as they kind of like try to flip out of the trailer. So figured the safest thing to do was to let her chill out before trying to unhook this and get her out of here. Uh, these panels have padding on them, um, so as long as they don't flip over the panels, they generally, you know, hopefully are pretty safe in here as long as they're contained in their little stalls. So uh, I decided to just sit and wait and let her hopefully settle down for a second so I could get her out of the trailer safely. Um, but while I was waiting, um, you know, I was thinking about uh, panic attacks and, and what happens when we go into panic mode. Um, and 
I think that her that day is a great example because she had been in this trailer for, you know, two hours round trip. Um, she had been completely content the whole time. Um, she rides in this trailer all the time uh, and is always like completely content in it. Um, but when we got back to the barn, for whatever, for whatever reason, I don't know what's going on in her head, something in her head triggered her anxiety and she, at that moment, every fiber of her being went into fight or flight mode and every fiber of her being was telling her I have to get out of this trailer this is an unsafe place to be and I have got to get away and uh, that's pretty that's pretty common for any animal or any human um, when we get scared when we get nervous um, a lot of times our brains will go into aversion techniques and kind of the only thing that makes sense to us at that moment is I got to get away from this thing. Whatever's causing me this stress, whatever's causing me this fear, I got to get away from it now. Um, and that's one of the ways the brain responds to threats. Um, and when you, I'm sure you've heard people talk about fight or flight response. Um, and that, you know, is a very, very old uh, primitive instinct. Um, and they always talk about the example of the caveman running from the saber-toothed tiger. And in that moment, if in that moment, if you're being chased by a predator, you know, you're, everything about your existence becomes getting away from that predator. So your brain flips into fight or flight mode. You get more blood supply to your muscles, your pupils dilate so you can see and navigate better. You know, a lot of things happen, adrenaline surges, um, and everything about your existence, every cell in your body, the primary focus is getting away from whatever threat you perceive or you really have. Um, and that's what happened to her that day. And so kind of all logic goes out the window. Um, even though she's been in this trailer, she's in this trailer all the time. And, you know, if she just, if she could just really process where she was at, she'd realize that she was safe. All that goes out of the window. And all of a sudden, everything about her was dedicated to how do I get out of this trailer at all cost. So I just want us to think about that for ourselves because uh, I mean there's definitely real things in life that we need to be concerned about, we need to react to, we need to be stressed about. Uh, this pandemic is a perfect example. This is something that we need to have a healthy amount of concern and uh, a healthy amount of, of fear about so we can hopefully make good decisions hopefully be responsible and keep ourselves as safe as possible but what we want to avoid is having an overreaction or maybe even just like her that day making up something completely in our heads um, and having an overreaction to something that's made up um, so, you know, next time you are feeling stressed or feeling panicky, uh, just think about this and, and, you know, take a deep breath and try to assess your situation. And maybe you might be in a situation where you realize, hey, I'm actually like in a nice, clean, safe trailer. I have like food, I have shelter. Um, and, you know, a lot of this is coming internally from my own brain. And if I just take a deep breath, I'll realize that like things are okay and I don't need to have this overreaction cascade fight or flight mode type uh, situation. It's much easier said than done than it is doing in real practice but that is where practice, practicing things like mindfulness and other sort of techniques uh, like that really come in handy to help us. Um, really help us be in the moment, live in the moment, and make sure that we're really responding to what's happening in that moment to us and not responding to things our brain is creating based on its memory log of thoughts and worries and concerns and what has been seen on TV and you know what we've read at some point in our life. Um, the brain has a lot of knowledge tucked in it and that's really awesome and amazing but um, we don't want to let the brain make up stuff uh, that maybe isn't actually really happening to us in that moment. So I hope that this made a little bit of sense and I hope that uh, it gives you something to think about next time. 
and I really hope you join me, uh, you keep joining me. So if you like these, please let me know, or if you have comments or feedback, please let me know, and um, hopefully you guys will subscribe and keep watching, and we can, uh, we can help each other be our, uh, our best uh, versions of ourselves and the happiest that we can be in this world. So uh, take care, and um, hope you have a good rest of the day. Bye.